I have to admit, there were so many desires that I've had in my 20s that would hinder me from growing into my most radiant and resilient version of myself. Whether it's desire for validation, the desire to be in romantic relationships, or the desire to prove my worth to my family and everyone else around me. All these hindrances would finally come to an end when I made a promise to myself back in early of December 2023 that I would elevate myself to be the 1% women during my 30s. And I'm so excited to share this journey with you. Let's get started. Number one, letting go of my desire to prove my worth to anyone. It's interesting because when we apply for a job, we have to prove our worth to the hiring manager using our resume. And even when we're trying to accomplish something, we always have to prove that we have these accolades and all these accumulated wins that makes us worthy of having something that we think will make us happy. And I was done with that. So it was my number one priority in 2024 to come back and really elevate every single part of me to make congruent decisions that makes me feel self-respect, to commit to habits that make me feel like a winner. And the more I was committing to these habits, the less patience I had to prove my worth to people who didn't even accept themselves. And I want to let you know that if you are in this phase of really elevating yourself, really improving your mindset, and you are finding yourself outgrowing so many things, it is not your fault that you don't want certain things in your life anymore. The relationship that you once thought you wanted, the wins and the validations that you think you wanted. Now that you feel like I actually love my own presence, to the the point where I just can't be bothered to go and pitch myself to others. That is a great sign that you are really truly growing. And so to really break free from this dynamic gave me so much time to be in flow, to think of better content ideas, and to be the version of myself who was speaking in flow to you guys. And I really hope you guys get to experience this phase in your life sooner or later. Two, the desire to be in a relationship. Now let's just say you come across somebody who's turning 30 and she's single with no kids. You may have assumed that she was just playing too hard to get or she has too too high standards that she would now forever be alone. But for me in my case, because I really love the process of evolving myself, I find myself having very little patience in selling myself to people that weren't going to pay my future bills, that weren't going to help me elevate this YouTube channel. And even though this kind of thinking was very transactional and selfish, but it helped me grow so far spiritually on my YouTube journey. My mentality these days is that if the guy is not guaranteed to be my long-term partner, I don't want to spend time talking to him about passion and interest. I don't want to be telling him that I'm a great baker, that I'm a great speaker, that I have a YouTube channel, because there is no point in selling yourself to anyone that's not going to add value to your life. And I really want you guys to see things from this perspective that if you are willing to settle for relationships where you have to dim your own power to make the guy feel better about himself, then you might as well take a bit of time to just really enjoy your presence. Get to know who this new version of you is so that you can attract people that have high self-esteem, that have things going on in their life and they can support you on this journey. And to be honest, I was in a relationship where when I wanted to audition for Thai Entertainment, the guy would say, but I don't want you to be in a kissing scene with other people. So please don't audition for Thai Entertainment. Or if I tried looking for a better job myself, then I would also get paid more than you. And even though these statements are quite harmless, but it truly helped me come to the turning point that I would never ever want to be in a dynamic where I have to dim my own power or settle for what I don't want in order to make somebody else happy. So I really want you to know your value and your standards and really take your time to nurture the best relationship with yourself so that you only allow the best people to come and share those loving experiences with you. Three, the desire to keep toxic or transactional friendships around just because I fear of loneliness. Now during my teen years, I was always the person who was curious. I loved performing on stage and I was good at piano at the time. So what I would do is go and practice piano during the lunch breaks and I had this one friend group who I thought were my friend group. At the time, they ditched me because we had different parties in high school. My priority was to be the best version of myself. I had great piano skills, so I wanted to show it. And even though these girls are not bad people at all, and in fact, even one reached out to apologize to me, but it made me fear of being alone in my adult years. I feared of not having friends. I fear of getting ditched in the playground. I feared of having to relive that experience where I was alone on the playground at recess and lunch because my friend group would disappear on me. But in order for me to have these friend groups in my life, I had to dim my own power and not really embrace my true potential. And this fear that just kept perpetuating in my adult years just didn't stop until I made the firm decision that I don't need toxic or transactional friendships to validate my worth. I found that because of this previous fear of being alone, I would attract narcissists to suck the life out of me. They would first love bomb me and tell me how much they love me within like two to three weeks of knowing each other. But later on, that love would turn into something really weird. It would be like a transactional thing where I always had to meet their emotional needs 
or I had to serve their business purposes or I had to dim my own light to be their underling so that they feel great about themselves. And the minute I want to break away from these people, they would get mad and throw me these weird text messages, guilt trip me and make me not want to leave them. And it just kept happening consistently throughout my 20s that it would be the same kind of friendship but in just different people. And it wasn't until I realized that enough is enough. I don't need to keep this toxicity in my life that I just finally felt safe in my own companionship. And in turn, I also have these great friends that truly support me for who I am today. So today I could say that I don't have friend groups, but I do have good girlfriends where we could have quality conversations. We could be open with each other. We support each other on our own growth. And we talk about things that are unfiltered. We don't need to pretend that we are better than we actually are in order to impress each other. And for me personally, I don't contact my best friends every week. We might talk like maybe once every three months. And some of my best friends, I would meet them only once every four months. Every single time we met again, things were the same and they were all stable friendships. And those are honestly the best friendships for myself. So the next time you guys feel like, why don't I have a big social group? Who am I going to invite to my birthday party? Who am I going to invite to my own celebration? I don't have any friend groups. I want you to realize that having less friend does not make you a weirdo. You are not a loner or a loser for not having friends, but you are choosing your inner circle wisely and you never need 10 or 20 groups of people to validate your worth if they are going to be secretly jealous or envious of you behind the scenes. And you honestly don't need 10, 20 or 30 girlies to validate your worth to your face, but behind your back, they're jealous of you. They always give you these backhanded compliments. They make you question your worth. These are the people that deserve no space in your life whatsoever. So I want you to be really firm with that. And I promise you that the minute you let go of this, your life will flourish by 10x instantly. Four, the desire to have personal social media accounts for the sake of just flexing my life. Now, since December of 2022, I made it a firm conviction that I would never just use social media to flex my non-existent life. I wasn't going to flex my life to anybody who couldn't get me to the future that I wanted to be at. So instead of me fracturing my focus everywhere, trying to go to this dinner outing, trying to go here, trying to go there and then snap an Instagram story to then share to my friend group, why don't I save that energy to be in flow and create high value contents that actually make an impact to people's lives? And from my really personal experience, I can't actually make high value content by still keeping that part of me who wants to flex my lifestyle to others. See, honestly, creating your Instagram feed to look a certain way is not hard. All I have to do is dress myself up, take myself to the actual place, sit down, order a cup of coffee in a fancy place and find the right camera angles and it will look like I have such an amazing life. But in reality, I might be crying myself to sleep from stress. I might be feeling anxious about my future. You guys can never know this from a beautiful Instagram post that was deliberately curated to make you guys feel envious of myself. And by 28, I decided that this was not going to be how I live. And so from this compounded habit of keeping my life very low key, not needing to show any acquaintances what my personal wins are, because these days I'm winning every day. And none of this is captured to show on my personal social media accounts. And the more I just committed to keeping my life private, the more I felt higher self-esteem. I respected myself for not needing to show off to acquaintances who would never even contact me in a million years. Why do I need to prove myself to people who don't want the best for me? Why do I need to prove myself to people who would never reach out to me unless they needed something from me? So that is honestly true liberation from my end. Five, the desire to have people feeling sorry for me. Now I have to admit that at one point, I really wanted everybody to feel sorry for me. And how I used to do this is to actually post angry posts on social media. I used to write essays about my own thoughts in the morning. And I found that the act of doing this only gave me attention from people that I didn't need. I didn't need men to look at my posts and try to build rapport with me just because they are attracted to me. But I just wanted quality friendships. I wanted people to realize my inherent worth. And I could never manifest those things because I didn't believe that I deserved to have lucky girl syndrome. If I truly knew that I had lucky girl syndrome, then I would be able to keep a silent and peaceful life where I'm celebrating my own wins privately. And I don't need to go out there to complain, to craft a speech, to give a performance, to impress others, to take care of others and to people please in order for them to feel sorry for me and give me the things I want in life. Because I was always cultivating this habit unconsciously, I was then also attracting a lot of narcissists where they would make me feel sorry for them after they listened to my problem. So I would kind of complain to them about what I'm going through and what I want to achieve. And then a few minutes later, all of my problems would seem very minuscule. They would then start to trauma dump their problems onto 
me. And it's like this trauma bonding session where I got nothing out of that catch up except feeling heavy and overloaded. You attract what you are. You really, really do. If you're giving out the energy of you must feel sorry for me and recognize my worth, then you will actually meet people who will do the exact same thing, but in a worse capacity to you. So in order for you to really manifest your dream life, you must ask yourself the very important question. Do I want to be the victim or the victor of my story? As cliche as it sounds, are you going to act like a desperate loser because your circumstances make you feel like a loser? Or are you going to behave like somebody who could win against any circumstances despite you being surrounded by every loserish environment around you? The more you could realize your true inherent worth, the moment you can realize that you are always worthy without having to achieve anything. You are worthy for just existing. That's when your behaviors will then start to be congruent to the ideal version of yourself where you are content with who you are. You are happy with your progress today. You love who you are today despite you're not achieving that goal yet but you still love who you are becoming and you want to always be in that space. When people feel sorry for you, you only get their temporary sympathy. If people see you and they think of you like, damn, she really did it. That's a long lasting impact. That thing is permanent. But in order for other people to respect you, you must feel true self-respect by taking actions that match the belief that you are the one. You are worthy of having anything that you want. You are the center of your own frame and you will never let anybody ruin that frame that you've created for yourself. Six, the desire to fit in where I don't belong. Now like the previous point, I ended up joining this not-for-profit organization solely because I wanted to achieve a certain goal. I wasn't exactly there because I was lonely. I was there because I wanted to succeed in life. And in the end, the whole experience gave me the exact opposite of what I intended. And that is because I was trying to fit in where I don't belong. If you are already exceptional at one skill, you're not going to go to a place where people are trying to develop that skill. And that's exactly what I was trying to do, constantly dimming my own power so that other people feel included. And I've honestly had enough. If people felt threatened by my progress and therefore I have to slow down to fit in, I was not going to neglect myself that way anymore. If you guys ever feel like I really enjoy filming videos, I really enjoy practicing piano, I really enjoy fitness, I really enjoy building my abs, and I also enjoy taking pictures of my myself and dressing myself up and it pisses other people off. You have to realize that that is their problem to deal with and you don't have to change yourself to fit into places where they're not going to accept you either way. And the most hypocritical thing about our society is that if we are not attractive, if we are not pretty, it's going to be a lot harder for us to gain opportunity and leverage. But the minute that we outshine others, the minute that we are excelling and taking off all these criteria to gain opportunity and leverage, people are also trying to dim our own lights and make us slow down. And if you feel like my presence is too lonely. I cannot be by myself. I cannot afford to spend Tuesday nights alone. I cannot afford to take myself to solo dates to really enjoy what I want to enjoy. But I have to dim my own light so that every Tuesday evening I have friends to talk to. I have a social group that validates my worth. Then you're not going to be able to reach your fullest potential. Now I'm not saying that any group is bad, but I'm saying that the minute you realize that you've outgrown a certain environment, you must be able to cherish your own presence. You must love yourself enough to never abandon yourself by turning down your ability by speaking less, by being a people pleaser. And if anybody tells you that you need to tone yourself down, you need to slow down, or you need to dim your own light, then that is your sign to leave that environment. You do not need to dim your own powers to fit into anywhere because you are comfortable in your own presence and you know exactly where you are going in life. Seven, the desire to hit life milestones by a certain age. Now this could be things like, by 30, I must get married. And this was actually a solid plan back when I was about 27. There was some sort of vision that we were going to get married. But I knew at the back of my mind that there was so much in life that I wanted to do. I wanted to go and swim my 2000 meters at Bondi Icebergs. I wanted to keep building my abs. I wanted to get better and better. And I just found so much passion in self-development. And if I were to get married at that time to that particular individual, every single decision that I make would be very different than all the decisions that I've made right now. Society has made women feel so insecure that by 30, they haven't found the one. But during my spare time, I always find myself listening to Thai podcasts because I actually actually grew up watching Tyler Conte with my parents. Those popular Thai dramas where the main character would always be this rotation of popular actors and actresses. And these days I love watching podcasts about them speaking about their life experiences. And there would be these Thai actresses who's literally in her 40s with one eight-year-old daughter and she's thriving these days. She's booking all these jobs as the lead, a 40-year-old lead. And she's dating this 27-year-old guy who's totally into her and he's also thriving in his career. And even more than anything, she's still slim, 
beautiful and looking gorgeous. And I'm thinking to myself, if these people can keep thriving despite going through harsh divorces, despite aging, despite going through all these obstacles in the entertainment industry, why can't I take care of myself to be the best version of me from 30 onwards? Why do I need to settle for dynamics that are not right for me? And the other milestone that really stresses people out is having investment properties, buying their own properties, having this kind of job, having this kind of promotion. And when I used to cling on to social groups back in my mid-20s, I felt so insecure about these things. It felt like if she has it, I need to have it because I'm her friend. And if I don't have it, it makes me fall behind. But the minute that I deleted my social media, the minute that I don't have these acquaintances in my contact list, and the minute I knew who truly cared for me based on who was reaching out to me, that's when it just didn't matter what I was achieving anymore. What truly matters was my relationship with myself, my own internal evolution. If I understood myself more, I would have the capacity to think of creative ways to make money. If I knew who I was and I wasn't insecure, the way I approach each day of my life would be full of confidence and knowing. And the more confidence you are, the more abundance you will attract. And in order for you to work hard in a way where your efforts will truly pay off, you have to self-inquire and know what are my skill sets? What am I exceptional at? What am I passionate about? What do I love doing every day for a long period of time? And in my case, I really like filming videos on YouTube. I love dressing up and talking about these things to you guys. So the more I was focusing on activities that make me feel empowered, like a winner, like there's no excuses as to why I wasn't going to do this. The more I felt confident in my ability to make money, the more I feel like everything is going to come to me because I built the system. I built the skill set. I committed to my growth and I've already closed the door to every single irrelevant distractions that I don't need. So therefore, why wouldn't I be deserving of that kind of life that I want to live? And again, it all starts from you being able to let go of when you have to achieve certain things by a certain time. There is no rush. The quality of your lifelong marathons matters so much more than you compromising your own life to achieve certain things that were never relevant to you at the end of it. Finally, number eight, the desire to seek approval from my parents or any authority figures. Now, if you grew up in an Asian or a Thai culture, it's like we always have this authority figure that we have to please. And I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone because we should always respect people who are older than us. But my question that makes my mom really annoyed at me is that what if that person is not worth respecting? What if that old person is just old in age, but they didn't really evolve themselves? Shall I have to bend my back to please them? Okay, I'm honestly willing to be polite to everyone. I'm willing to be conservative and, you know, follow the Thai traditions. But if I feel like this old person is in their victim mentality, they're thinking in loops, they're negative about their life perspective. Shall I have to extend my boundaries to let this negative energy affect me? And that's the exact thing that makes us dim our own power. Because in Asian culture, and especially in Thai culture, we kind of have to listen to the puyai. We have to be a dekdi or kondi. And that means that our opinions and thoughts don't matter as long as we are younger than them. But I refuse to go by this theory. If you guys think that success means that I have to get married by 30 and I have to be stable with my life and have everything figured out, then that's your trajectory on life. But I don't need to follow your trajectory to feel enough. If you don't like me for who I am, then why should I care? But this is an absolute no-no mentality if you are really immersed in that environment. And in a way, it really pressures people to suppress their potential. Okay, some people rise to their fullest potentials because their parents are supportive of them. But in a lot of cases, the parents or their relatives and family friends would have a very certain view of what success means. And that may mean that you have to become a doctor or a lawyer and you should never dress provocatively. You should never explore your sexuality and you should never be expressive about your opinions, but you have to keep it low. Tone yourself down. Don't express your whole opinion. Just be agreeable. Be nice to be around. Get along with others. But my question to you is, if that doesn't bring you fulfillment, are these people going to live with you until you are 80 or 90 years old? Are these people living in your consciousness every single day? Are these people going to sleep with you and waking up with you 24-7? No. So why should they have power over you? Again, I'm not saying you have to be disrespectful, but you need to set some really firm boundaries that if your thoughts and the way you speak and your trajectory towards life does not empower me or make me become the best version of myself. I can listen, but I'm not going to accept it. And you know what's interesting is that I actually was also told by this other lady that I was being disrespectful because I don't respond to her messages. And the reason why I don't respond is because the message gave me anxiety. And she was saying the exact same thing to me, like what my mom used to tell me. So I realized that I had this really weird dynamic of always bending my back to please narcissists. And it wasn't until I came to really accept myself that my life is worth so much more than people pleasing. My life is worth so much more than bending my back to make anybody happy, regardless if they're 80 years old, 90 years old, or 70 years old. If they are not taking ownership of their self-concept and the way they view their world, it's my responsibility to take care of myself so I can add value. But I am not the source of 
happiness for anyone and nobody is the source of my happiness. I should not have to depend on anyone to feel complete within myself. So therefore, nobody has the right to make you the vehicle for them to feel happy and whole in their life. So I want you guys to really recognize the importance of boundary settings. Do not let people that position themselves as authority figures or older figures or mentor figures tell you that you are less than them, that you need to listen to everything that they say, that you need to be respectful of them when you are respectful, but you're just drawing boundaries because you deserve to live the best life. You deserve to follow your own path. You deserve to be your own authority and you deserve to have your own power. Do not give your power away to people who think they have power over you. You deserve to be on your own pedestal and create your own frame. So continue to shine your own light and never dim yourself to fit other people's needs. Okay guys, so these are every single desire that I've let go of to finally be free and empowered in my own skin. If you guys like my videos, please feel free to subscribe and let me know in the comments down below what you want to see. I am looking forward to keep growing with you on this journey and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.